Hi, everybody. Welcome to Travis High School. This is VipeFortBend.com coverage of Fort Bend ISD softball. We're getting late in the season, and the playoffs are coming around soon. And tonight, we were thinking we might have a game to decide the championship of District 26A. Well, we don't because the Travis Tigers girls have taken care of business, and because of that, they are already the number one seed, and they know that's what's going to be happening going forward. The Ridge Point Panthers know they're going to be in the playoffs. So does Elkins. So does George Ranch. But tonight, Ridge Point is taking on Travis, and Ridge Point will still, after the regular season is over, have to play a a seeding game on Monday night against either Elkins. That's who they would face if they lose tonight to Travis. And then they would face George Ranch if they happen to beat Travis tonight. I'm Roger Smith. Glad you're with us, and we'll set you up with the Batter Up show. And we'll talk to only one coach because, unfortunately, that's the only uh, number of coaches we have time to talk to, and that would be Lindsey Gage of the Ridge Point Panthers. We'll be right back with that after this on VipeFortBend.com. Glad you're with us. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. What does the 50th anniversary of Title IX mean? It means I'm valued, I'm empowered, I can do anything. It means I'll pave the way for every girl who plays high school sports in the future. Just like every female student, coach, official, and administrator blazed the trail for me. Because every student deserves the opportunity to play. Encourage girls you know to participate in Texas high school sports. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. We're here at Travis getting ready for Ridge Point against the Tigers, and this is a little bit less climactic than we 
kind of hoped it would be because Travis does have the top seeds sewn up in the district. But this is a very important game for Ridgepoint. It's time to talk to Lindsey Gage, the head coach. And what are the main objectives other than the obvious, obvious one of winning the game tonight? Um, I mean, our main objective is to get better at the things that we've struggled at the last few few games that we've lost. Um, everything we do now is to prepare for playoffs, and Travis is a playoff team. So, you know, playing teams like Travis right before we go into playoffs is only going to make us better. All right. I know that you want your team to approach every game. You want to win each one and if it's possible look at each one with equal importance but when it is Travis doesn't that just naturally make your girls a little more fired up oh definitely I mean I feel like Travis is always super competitive and our girls are always excited to play um, every game we play Travis seems like a playoff game it's a playoff like atmosphere both teams are always excited and pumped up so um, it's, it's just enjoyable it's very competitive and you know it gets you ready is there anyone on their side in particular that you feel like you just need to make sure she doesn't hurt you too bad in order to be a key to victory? I mean, Travis has a lot of good players. I mean, you have the, the obvious ones like Ariel. Um, their catcher's really good. They have players that just put the ball in play and they get the timely hit. So I feel like you're never safe anywhere in their lineup, and that kind of showed the first time we played them. Um, the, their whole lineup hit us well. So, you know, our goal today is... To, to hit our spots pitching and make the routine plays defensively. All right. Great to talk to you, and we're going to talk to you again Monday night. We know one way or the other, whether you win or lose tonight, there will be a game that you'll play for seeding. So we'll see you then, and I'll save a few questions for then. All right. Thank you so much. That is Lindsay Gage of Ridgepoint, and we'll be back with Katie Kilgore of Travis. If she has a free moment for us, she's very busy. We'll be back on VibeFordMen.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Ooh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get GigSpeed Internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity Internet required. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. 
we supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week, which we have been bringing you since August, back when we started with a Ridgepoint volleyball match. And since then, we've done about 120 broadcasted events, and we're happy to do that. And we think that we'll have, I don't know, 15, 20 more. If we had that many more, that would be awesome. So, we want to tell you that our coverage tonight, our exclusive coverage on VipeFortBend.com of Ridgepoint versus Travis Softball is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tire and Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best service for tires. You can get the best prices on tires. Anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best, all four of those locations are open Monday through Saturday. Visit FirstTireAndAuto.com. By Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. And you will feel like family when you're at Archer Volkswagen. And we're also brought to you by the Needville Insurance Agency. Put hundreds of dollars back in your pocket when Bradley Stavanaugh and the Needville Insurance Agency team shop all those insurance carriers and they will find the very lowest premium for you. You don't even have to leave your house. You will save money on your car insurance or your home insurance or both. Call Bradley Stavanaugh and he will save you money. 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. We'll be back with the starting lineups here on vipefortbend.com right after this. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe news throughout the entire year subscribe today what are you waiting for it's less than a cup of coffee a month become a vipe insider $2.99 a month $23.99 for the whole year hey it's vipe we will see you at the games all right i think the only thing we need is an umpire and i just saw one walk through the gate okay we're almost ready to play softball and here's your starting lineup for the visiting ridgepoint panthers Jade Uresti, the second base player, leads off. At shortstop, it's Malin Simmons. Batting third, it's Grace Yannick at third base. Reagan Green is at first base, and she's the cleanup hitter. Braylon Daniels is the catcher for Ridgepoint and bats fifth. Batting sixth, it is Riley Ship in left field. Bailey Gray is the pitcher. She will, she will not bat for herself, I don't believe. It'll be Kyla Correa, the designated player, batting in her place. Batting in the eighth spot, it is right fielder Blaine Simmons and Callie Mays playing center field and batting ninth for Ridgepoint. For Travis, which has already sewn up the district championship, they have a record of 12-1 and in District 26A, and no matter what happens here tonight, they will be the top seed going into the playoffs. 
Ariel Kowalewski is the pitcher. She hits for herself and leads off for the Lady Tigers. Lauren Garza, the shortstop, bat second. Maddie Morris is playing third base and batting third. Kennedy Clark, the catcher, is in the cleanup position for Travis. Casey Perkins, the center fielder, bats fifth. Addie Flores in left field, bats sixth. Batting seventh, it's Rachel Ramirez at first base. L. Smith, the second baseman, bats eighth. And Jaden Cobran is the designated player and bats for the right fielder, Maria Reese. We'll take one more break and be back on VitefortBend.com and bring you the first pitch. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X by gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. While they introduce all the players here, let's set up the game for you. Travis, with an overall record of 16-9 and 12-1 and and in their district games, is on a win streak. You know, they lost six straight tournament games way back in March in the span of three days, but other than that, they've just been absolutely nails. Their last loss was to George Ranch on April 5th, but that is the only blemish on their district record. Ridge Point has lost three straight to Travis. They lost two in 2021 and one this year. So they're certainly wanting to turn that around. And of course there were no district games in 2020. So the two teams didn't play each other then. Travis has clinched the district title as we already mentioned, 12 and one with one game left on the schedule. And that's this one. Ridge Point will be in the playoffs, but they're gonna have to play another game on Monday to determine seating. If the Panthers lose tonight, they play against Elkins, which is eight and four, going into its final district games. If Ridge Point wins tonight, they will play George Ranch on Monday night. George Ranch, just like Ridge Point, is ten and three in their district games, and George Ranch is home against Dulles tonight. So I'm willing to say that there's simply no chance that uh, that George Ranch is going to drop that game tonight. So, Travis, I really don't have any stats for either team on this game. I really like to give you statistical background and kind of give you the whole story of the season. But I can tell you this, that Travis has scored 135 runs in their district games and only allowed 18. So defense is definitely their strong suit. Ridge Point has scored more than Travis in their district games, 160 runs, but they have allowed... 46, which uh, I may not be a smart man, but that's more than twice as many runs as Travis has allowed. Now we'll break for the Star Spangled Banner.
All right, we are just about ready to go here in Richmond, Texas. It's a delightful day for softball. The one thing that uh, is especially delightful is if you're a right-handed hitter, you've got power and you can pull the ball because the wind is blowing pretty briskly out to right field. By the way, we always like to give you our game time temperature. And it's 81 degrees here at 11111 Harlem Road, which is the address of Travis High School. Ariel Kowalewski, she's kind of the straw that stirs the drink for this Travis team. She is the pitcher. She really enjoys catching, but pitcher is where she needs to be based on the other Travis personnel. Kennedy Clark is her catcher. Rachel Ramirez is over at first base. L. Smith at second. Lauren Garza at shortstop, and Maddie Morris is at the hot corner third base. Addie Flores is in left field for Travis, Casey Perkins in center, and Maria Reese is in right field. They don't have any numbers on the fence that tell us the actual dimensions, but this is kind of a band box ballpark. There's just not too, too, too much room out there in outfield, so it makes it a little bit easier on defense, and sometimes you can play it off the fence, but any ball that gets up in the air going toward left field, as long as it's not hit too early, there's a chance that it is gonna fly out. Rich Point has some power, but they just need to get their groove back. Travis has basically had their groove all season. They've only lost that one district game to George Ranch. Now we're ready to go with Jade Uresti standing in to be followed by Malin Simmons and Grace Yannick. Travis wearing the home whites, and they've got the old school stirrup socks with scarlet at the top, skinny white stripe, gray stripe, skinny white stripe, and more red. Jay Duresti hits lefty. Ariel Kowaliski is a right-handed pitcher. Open stance for Uresti. Here's the pitch, and she takes one upstairs for ball one. I was kind of hoping, honestly, that we would come into this game with each team having one loss or Travis having no losses and Ridge Point only one, but it hasn't worked out that way. Uresti takes the second pitch. It's outside for a ball. Kowalewski, Roxanne brings it. That's downstairs, three and nothing on Uresti. So you got Elkins making the playoffs for the first time and I, I forgot exactly what was the last year that they've been in the postseason, but they beat Ridge Point last week to clinch that spot and there is ball four to Uresti, although ball four looked like it could have been strike one. Now Malin Simmons as Ridge Point at the top of its lineup has Worked in several left-handed hitters, and before Malin Simmons bats, she's going to go down there to the third base coaching box and talk to Lindsey Gage. By the way, whenever we do a baseball or softball game, what we like to do is interview both coaches, but today we couldn't interview Katie Kilgore because the JV game was played right before this one, and once that ended, she had to get to work, so we weren't able to pull that off. First pitch is down and in to Malin Simmons as she squared to bunt and everybody's crashing in from the corner infield positions. Maddie Morris and Rachel Ramirez. Kowalewski brings it. That is bunted toward third, but it goes foul. Kowalewski inside her protective mask is wearing glittery red either stickers or eyeshadow, and it looks great in the afternoon sun. And we do have a bright afternoon sun that will go down behind the third base dugout in the next half hour or so. That one bunted straight back to the mound. Morris picks it up, throws to first, and that's L. Smith covering. They throw back to second to try and see if maybe, just maybe, Jay Uresti was rounding second too far. But that's a perfectly executed sacrifice bunt, and the play goes five to four for the first out. Now Grace Yannick stands in. And she's wearing some protection on her left ankle. 
There's a strike at the knees. With the runner at second and one out. The 0-1 pitch is high and away. Here comes the next one. That's a strike, and Yannick didn't like the call. One and two. Her dad went driving all over Greater Houston to find the right kind of ankle protector after she fouled one off of her left instep. Here's a pitch that just misses away, and the count is even two and two. What was ball two could have been a strike, and what was strike two could have been a ball. Counts right where it should be. Popped up in the air on the right side. It's going to stay in play, and it's the first play base player, Rachel Ramirez, who squeezes it in front of the ridge point dugout, and they try to get Uresti advancing. They throw to third, and out there. Double play. It goes three to five. Rachel Ramirez catches the pop-up, fires to the third base player, Maddie Morris, and that'll do it for Ridge Point. Not a good sign for the Panthers, who are trying to recapture some momentum. We'll be back on BiteFortBend.com. No score yet, and the Tigers coming to bat. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Bailey Gray goes to the mound for the Ridge Point Panthers who are wearing the white pants, the purple jersey tops with the white shoulders and sleeves and the white numerals and letters on either side. And here's the defensive alignment for Ridge Point. The catcher is Braylon Daniels at first base. It's Reagan Green at second base, Jay Juresti. Shortstop, Malin Simmons, Grace Yannick at third base. In left field, Riley Ship, Callie Mays is in center, and Blaine Simmons is in right field. Now, something that I'm going to work into my narration is the, uh, the nicknames that they usually use on the public address system here at Travis. Number two, Ariel Kowalewski. All right, so they just go straight forward with Ariel Kowalewski. Now she's a powerful left-handed hitter, but she's certainly strong enough to go oppo and drive it over that left field wall. Bailey Gray steps up there. And the right-hander delivers the first pitch at the bottom of the first, and it's high for ball one. Ariel ready for the next one. Here it comes. And that's high for a ball. You know, the name Ariel has always meant uh, one of my favorite animated movie characters, but I'm kind of down on Disney right now, so this is my favorite aerial. That one just missed either low or inside, and she's got a 3 nothing count. And we'll see if head coach Katie Kilgore gives her the green light to swing away if it's something she likes. Here comes the 3-0. And she takes ball four. So each team gets its leadoff player on via the walk. But when Rich Point batted in the top of the first, they were retired in order because of a double play on a pop out, throw them out. Now Lauren Garza, bunt attempts, but it trickles back behind home plate. You know, when I walked by here during a game that they were playing against Bush, I was going over to the baseball field to talk to Coach Rick Grimm. They gave everybody a nickname. I don't know what's happened to that. Here's a bunt, two hops to Yannick, throws to first in time. You're resty covering. The sacrifice bunt works. 
Score it five to four. That's the first out. And on the second goes Kowalewski. Maddie, now Maddie Morris, the queen of alliteration. Strong right-handed hitter. Bailey Gray looks at her wrist, knows what the sign is, now brings it. Foul tip on a mighty swing by Morris. And it's nothing in one. Gray's ready to bring the next one. Here it comes. And it's a slow roller toward short. Malin Simmons picks it up, throws to first. Kowalewski takes off. And safe at third is Kowalewski. Grace Yannick applied the tag quickly as she could and was kind of hoping that Ariel would slide past first base, but it didn't work out that way. Number 10, Kennedy Clark. So the second out is made, 6-3, and now it's Kennedy Clark. She hits lefty, open stance. Bailey Gray brings it. That pitch is inside, ball one. Very comfortable, 81 degrees. And we're on the shady side of the stands, the ones where Ridgepoint sits, but that's only because that's where the electrical outlet is. We show no favoritism. Pitch down and in for a ball, and immediately Kennedy Clark holds up her hand and lets Kowalewski knows that lets her know that she should not try to advance home from third. The ball only trickled away about five feet behind the catcher, Braylon Daniels. Gray brings it. There's a strike on the outside corner, and the count is two and one. They're developing quite a skyline beyond the outfield fence here at the Travis softball field. There's a pitch that is a ball, three and one. It could be that Bailey Gray is pitching Kennedy Clark rather carefully. Here comes a 3-1, swing and a miss, and Clark wanted to go downtown with that one. So they have all kinds of things being built over there beyond the outfield fence. And of course, heavy traffic on Harlem Road. Here's the payoff pitch. It's a little chopper down the right field line. I'm sorry, down the first baseline, and it rolls into foul ground. So we'll do it all again. Tomorrow we have a Rich Point baseball game. It's a non-district game from Brazoswood in beautiful downtown Clute, Texas. My family went on a couple of week-long vacations to Surfside Beach in Freeport. There is a ground ball, one hopper back to Gray. She gloves it, throws to Reagan Green. And the only thing really different about the bottom of the first was that four batters came to the plate and there was no double play, but both teams keep the other off the scoreboard and we'll continue to the second on VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Um. 
All right, just a reminder, not only do we have a Ridgepoint baseball game, non-district variety at Brazoswood tomorrow, a game that has the first pitch at 11 a.m., but also, oh, by the way, in that uh, game tomorrow, the batter-up show will begin at 10.40 a.m. We have another game on Tuesday night to be determined, but also we have... Rich Point against Travis at 4 o'clock in the afternoon a week from today. Reagan Green leads off for Rich Point here in the top of the second. No score between the Panthers and their rivals, the Travis Tigers. Travis, the champions, undisputed. First place already captured in District 26A. The second pitch from Ariel Kowalewski is a ball. Two and nothing on Reagan Green. Here comes the pitch. Upstairs and it's three and nothing. Braylon Daniels and Riley ship to follow. Here's the pitch. That looked pretty good. Over the plate but low. And it's a four pitch walk to start. The top of the second. Every half inning has started with a walk. Now Braylon Daniels is going to dig in and give it a go. First pitch swinging and she comes up empty. Nothing in one. Kowalewski has pitched nearly all the innings for Travis this year. There's a strike on the outside corner, and Braylon Daniels is down nothing in two. Here's the 0-2. Just missed. And I believe that Ariel was trying to get Braylon to chase it, and she didn't. Here it comes. That is a high pop-up into foul ground behind home plate. And a nice basket catch by Kennedy Clark. And runs right into the fence after she makes that catch. That's the first out. And Reagan Green is still at first base. And Riley Ship will stand in. I enjoy quirkiness in a ball player. First pitch, ship swings and misses. Nothing in one. She likes to pull the collar of her jersey up into her mouth while she awaits the pitch. Open stance from the left-handed box. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. That pitch breaking away from her and she's down 0-2. Roger Smith with you on VipeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Ship swing and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, and that's two away. First strikeout for Kowalewski. Now it is Bailey Gray, the pitcher, hitting for herself. Slightly close stance from the right-handed box. Take strike one. Here comes the 0-1. Fouled out of play to the left over the Travis dugout. So next Friday at 4 p.m., and I think it's a prom thing, that's when Ridge Point and Travis are going to play their district season finale baseball game, and we'll have that for you. We'll have a game after that. We just don't know what it is yet. Next pitch is outside, 1-2 and two now. Ariel Kowalewski wears the, the cute little sunflower thing on her ponytail, and that's a sign that she is going to be a Florida Gator. Nice spoiled swing by Bailey Gray as she fouls it back, and you heard it bang into something. I think, uh, I guess it was the speaker. And I guess when they introduce or try to introduce the next hitter, we'll know if she broke it. 
One and two on Gray. Here it comes. Way outside. She didn't chase. Two and two. Reagan Green led off this top of the second with a walk. She's still at first base after a foul pop-up and a strikeout. Gray is ready. And that's a liner over shortstop and into left center field. Everybody moves up one. Everybody being all one base runner that was out there before. Reagan Green now at second. And that's the first hit of the game for Ridge Point. Now Blaine Simmons stands in. Right fielder and twin sister of the number two hitter, the shortstop, Malin Simmons. The two sisters are going to marry Harden, Baylor, and Belton next year. Runners first and second with two outs in the first pitch is a strike to Blaine. Steps out, steps back in. Takes the second pitch away for a ball. The left-handed hitting Blaine Simmons wears a glove on the right hand, but none on the left. And I should ask her or her parents if she plays golf. Deep crouch stance, swings and misses. Now the count is one and two. Kowalewski shaking her arm out a little. Little now brings the pitch and just missed what she thought was strike three. Callie Mays would be next if Blaine Simmons can get on. And now Blaine steps out. I've noticed lately that you have a lot of umpires that don't necessarily grant you time if you ask for it. And Blaine fights it off, a nice little spoil swing, and sends it back onto the sidewalk that leads to the concession stand, which I can't go to because I'd rather sit here and talk to you. But if anyone from Ridge Point is going to the concession stand and wants to get me something, <laughs> that would be fine. Simmons fouls one out of play again to keep it going. And the home plate umpire goes out to brush off home plate. The players' jerseys and the umpire's uniforms rippling in the breeze. Here comes the pitch. That's a pop-up. It's going to go in foul ground on the left side. Matty Morris moving over and makes a great catch. Oh, my goodness. It would have fallen into the dugout, but she reached over the rail, and she made a great catch. And we are still scoreless. Ridge Point and Travis will continue to the bottom of the second right after this. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Hello, I'm back. Uh, my little commercial player stopped working. And uh, glad I was looking at the screen. Number three, Casey Perkins. All right, so uh, we will we'll make it up to our good friends at uh, Comcast who, you know, if not for them, we really couldn't do this. They're kind of our flagship sponsor. Thank you so much. 
On we go to the bottom of the second, second inning, and it is Casey Perkins who stands in. Center fielder. By the way, neither of these teams this year is carrying a game changer page, and so because of that, I don't really have any kind of statistical info to give you. Pitch fouled away, out of play. Over to our right. They count one and one as Bailey Gray works to Casey Perkins. To be followed by Addie Flores and Rachel Ramirez. Pitch on the way, over but low. You know, um, sometimes if you have at least a game changer page, you can tell what teams did the last two or three games or if I get obsessive, which I sometimes am about these games. Ground ball towards second. Uresti, she throws over to Reagan Green. Easy out, 4-3, one away. So if you have a game changer page for either team or teams that have played against them, sometimes I can tell you that so-and-so player is, you know, three for, for 12 in her last three games, that kind of thing. I like to do that. But sometimes, you know, just uh, not have way. And the first pitch to Addie Flores he is a ball. She's the left fielder for Travis. Right-handed hitter against Bailey Gray of Ridgepoint. Next pitch is out. Actually, it caught the outside corner. Strike one. One and one on Addie Flores. When these two teams played at Ridgepoint over a month ago, it was a run rule game. The Tigers came in and just kicked butt and took names and drove away very happy. Ridgepoint has lost more games during their district schedule than they're used to. Of course, it's not too late to get it together. But they really need a win tonight. Off-speed pitch, swing and a miss. It's 2-2 two and two on Addie Flores. You know, maybe during one of our commercial breaks, I'll go into the press box and say, why aren't you using the nicknames? Pitch is upstairs, and it goes 3-2. and two. By the way, we like to talk about rankings once in a while, and that pitch is outside for ball four. Addie Flores is on. Now up, Ra up comes Rachel Ramirez. So neither one of these teams is ranked in the state's top 25 by the poll that I follow. First pitch to Ramirez, outside ball one. So they should be uh, insulted. They should, you know, you not that, not that the polls aren't accurate. I really don't know. But you use whatever you can for motivation. Slow ground ball to second. Uresti throws to first in time to retire Ramirez, but Flores moves to second. That's two outs. Number six. LK. Jay Duresti has made the play on both of the balls that were put in play during this inning. And now with the runner in scoring position and two outs, it's L. Smith. First pitch swung on and missed. Bailey Gray gets ahead. The right-hander rocks and fires. That's a strike on the outside corner. Flores with good speed at second. And she is ready to rock on any ball that's, that's hit other than maybe right at the second baseman, Malin Simmons. There's a foul ball that stays within the stands. Almost caught barehanded by a Ridgepoint fan. And the count is nothing and two. Number 
L ready. That pitch is over but low and it's one and two. Bailey Gray wears number seven. L Smith wears number six. Here's the one, two. Upstairs, two and two. You know, this game is tough and tight and all that, but I don't have a lot of statistical information and historical stuff to share, so I might go on a rant about who knows what, but it could be a consumer issue, and you might be uh, interested in it. Foul back behind us and to the right. Count still two and two on L. Smith. She's, she steps out, visualizes the perfect swing, gets back in there, and Bailey Gray delivers again. Called strike three on the outside corner, and that is how the second inning ends. For the Travis Tigers, no runs on no hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. We'll proceed to the third. No score between Travis and Ridgepoint. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x by gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Ridge Point brings up Callie Mays. Then the top of the order, Uresti and Malin Simmons. And the first pitch is a ball, one and nothing on Callie Mays. Anybody who plays in center field is always speedy, so I'd like to call her Callie Mays Hayes. The 1-0 is upstairs. She likes to kind of take that step forward and towards first. Maybe slap down one of those Ground balls to the left side of the infield, and with her speed, she could beat it out. Here's Kowalewski's pitch, and she fouls it back into the screen. One and two on Callie Mays. She reaches down with her one bare hand, which is the left hand, and picks up a handful of dirt. Here's the one, two, way upstairs. And it's two and two. Kowalewski rocks and brings the next one. And it's a fouled off. You know, she kind of was fighting off what would have been strike three. She's really good just making the contact and either fouling it off or putting it in play. And as long as she doesn't hit it in the air, she's got a good chance to beat out anything. Here's the 2-2. There's a called strike three. Second strikeout for Kowalewski, and there's one away. So the fly in the ointment for Fort Bend ISD in District 26A is George Ranch. They've won nine straight games since they lost to Ridgepoint on March 11th, and that included a one-run win over Travis, and in the rematch with Ridgepoint, they won that one by one in nine innings. First pitch swinging for Jade Uresti and straight back into the vinyl pad. And it's nothing and one. 
So in the Class 6A statewide poll, there is just no respect for teams out of District 26A. Nobody made it into the top 25. Uresti takes a strike, and she's down 0-2. There are a lot of Houston area teams in the top 25 poll, and I mean the one that is from the uh, Girls High School Coaches Association in Texas. Pitch is high to Uresti. It's now 1-2. So that's the Texas Girls Coaches Association poll. And we want to thank Butch Hart, who does such a great job with that. One, two, down and away, and the count is even two and two. I like the polls that are updated week by week. And there's the, for baseball, it's the Diamond Pro Texas High School Baseball.com poll that seems the best one. Called strike three on the inside corner. And down goes Uresti. Two outs and Malin Simmons steps up. Easy to tell Malin apart from Blaine because Malin's hair is so much lighter than Blaine's right now. And frankly, I don't know if that's natural or not. Here's the first pitch. And you're not supposed to ask. Down and in for ball one. About the hair, I mean, you're not supposed to ask. Kowalewski ready, brings it, just missed downstairs or maybe outside. I'm not at the ideal angle to figure it out. You just can't get straight behind the plate unless you go in the press box, and I don't want to go in there. 2-0 pitch is swung on and missed. It's now 2-1 on Malin Simmons, who kicks the dirt around a little bit, steps out. Steps back in. Kowalewski brings it. Fouled out of play, 2-2. Two and two. I say out of play, but it actually did not get over the backstop. The shadows from behind the third base dugout are only just now starting to creep over the third base line. There is a line drive over second and into right center for a base hit. Malin Simmons is on with two outs. Second hit of the game for Ridgepoint. And Grace Yannick, who popped up into a double play. She hit one into foul ground on the right, and it was gloved by Rachel Ramirez. And on the play, Jade Uresti tried to advance from second to third, and she was thrown out. Yannick takes the first pitch, strike on the outside corner. Steps right back in. Here's the pitch. Upstairs for a ball, one and one. Kowalewski ready to bring the 1-1 and is fouled out of play by Yannick over the first base stands. Want to thank Les Clary who's inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. And there's a fly ball to short center and it drops in. And Malin Simmons trying to advance to third. She gets there. The throw is high anyway. She would have made it. But a little bloop double for Grace Yannick. It stayed in the air for a while. Casey Perkins charged it. So that's the third hit for Ridgepoint. You got runners at second and third, and now it's up to Reagan Green, who's had no official at-bat. She walked in the second. And a little pitcher circle conference. Just players. Coach Katie Kilgore didn't go out there. Quick chat. And anything hit to the outfield that's not caught will almost certainly bring in two runs. Green ready. Strike on the outside corner and a nice job of framing by Kennedy Clark. She kind of moved her entire torso over to the right where the umpire could see the ball get over the outside black of the plate. 
Here's the 0-1. Does the same thing, but that pitch is high, and it's 1-1. One one. Kowalewski digs in, now rocks and fires. That is a slow hit ball into foul ground on the right side, and Rachel Ramirez gloves it about four feet wide of the line. And that'll do it for Ridgepoint. They get a couple of hits, but they strand runners at second and third. We'll continue on VipeFortBend.com. We're still scoreless between Travis and Ridgepoint. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. we're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week we hope to see you soon Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Jaden Cobran leads off for Travis in the bottom of the third. No score. And the first pitch to her is a strike on the outside corner. Um, I think we had kind of lost our natural sound audio, and I think we have that restored. So I think you'll, you'll like what you hear better now. Next pitch from Bailey Gray, swung on and missed. After Coburn, it's the leadoff hitter Ariel Kowalewski, then Lauren Garza. Pitch is high for a ball. One and two on Coburn. I was trying to remember those nicknames when I was here for that game they played against Bush. I can only remember one nickname, and I'll tell you when she comes up. Pitch in the dirt, ball two. The wind continuing to blow, not at gale force or anything, but pretty briskly toward left field. The outfield is shallow for Cobran. She goes the other way, but it's foul off the front of the first base dugout. And we're still at two and two. Looks like we have some late arriving fans making their way in. Here's the two, two. It's a ground ball towards second base off of Uresti's glove and into right field. Blaine Simmons backs up the play, but there's no chance to throw out Cobran. And since that required uh, Uresti to make a pretty long run, I'm going to give her a single on that one. So leave it to the number nine hitter for Travis to get the first base hit for the Tigers. And now Kowalewski stands in. Left-handed slugger, first pitch in there for a strike. Gray's pitched very well thus far for Ridgepoint. Here comes the next one. And that's outside for a ball, one and one. So nobody from District 26A is ranked in the state top 25 in 6A softball. One, one, and that is high in the air to right field. Going back, trying to get it, and Simmons can't get it. 
Here comes Coburn to third base and they will wave her home. Late throw by Uresti, safe. It is one to nothing, Travis. And it ends up being a triple for Kowalewski. Rich Point didn't want to fall behind. Not that they can't come back, but lately Travis has had their number. number so it's not going well. But they've got to turn it around, and they have to do it starting right now against Lauren Boom Boom Garza. Here's the pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Kowalewski really powered that ball kind of into the wind, but it kept going. 0-1, grounded foul, and Katie Kilgore, the third base coach and head coach, she just whiffed on it. I'm sure she's not proud of her effort there. But it's really of no consequence. It's just for entertainment purposes only. Garza put down a sacrifice bunt her first time. Ready for the 0-2, but it gets past the catcher, Braylon Daniels, and home from third comes Kowalewski. It's 2 to nothing, Travis, and nobody out. Now, whatever strategy that Coach Kilgore was using with Garza in the box, it's kind of out the window. But the base is empty, check swing. They appeal to the infield umpire, he says no swing. And it is two and two on Boom Boom Garza. Here's the one, two, upstairs. I said one, two, I don't know why I said that, it was two and two. So now it's three and two. I know why I said it. I peeked at the scoreboard when I knew better. I knew it was two and two. I know now it is three and two. Here comes the pitch. Ball four. So Rich Point already down two to nothing. A runner at first with still nobody out. They got to make sure that the game does not get away from them right here. Maddie Morris ready. First pitch to her is outside for a ball. So just in case you're wondering about, well, if, if nobody from District 26A is in the top 25 poll in the state, who is from the greater Houston area? I'll tell you. Foul ball out of play. One and one, the count on Morris. So Deer Park which eliminated Ridge Point from the state playoffs last year. They're 30 and two, and they are ranked number one, and I think they should be, because they won state. There's a pitch low for a ball, two and one. Aldi MacArthur, 22 and two. They are ranked fourth. Clear Springs is ranked 11th. There's more, hold on, here's the two one, and it's a ground ball high chopper towards Simmons. Picks it clean, throws a bouncer to Reagan Green, and she digs it out and they get the out. And the runner moves to second base. That being Garza. So you score that 6-3. The runner moves into scoring position and Kennedy Clark comes up. She grounded back to Gray her first time. Hold the thought on the pole. I already tell you it's Deer Park in first place. Alding McArthur is fourth and Clear Springs is 11th. There's a strike at the knees to Kennedy Clark. Spring, the Spring Lions are ranked 16th in the state, but they're in Region 2. That doesn't really concern Ridge Point or Travis or anybody else in Region 3. Just outside with a second pitch to Clark, and it's one and one. Bailey Gray. Has given up two runs in this inning, trying to work out of trouble. 1-1 one, one on the way. Strike on the inside corner. Kennedy Clark smiling, kind of a grimace smile. She is uh, thinking that it's kind of humorous that that was called a strike. She can do that since it was only strike two. Looks at a change up and it just missed at the letters. Now she walks away saying, wow, I was lucky that that wasn't 
an inch lower. Could have been a called strike three. Gray wipes her pitching hand on the side of the pants, now brings it. Oh, that looked good, but it's a ball, and the count is three and two. Pearland is ranked number 17 in the weekly poll, and Katie right now is at 20. More on Katie in a moment. Here's the payoff pitch, and it's line drive toward left field. Ship almost makes the catch. It goes into her glove. She throws to third to try and get the force, and it's not in time. Everybody's safe. It had a lot of spin on it. Riley Ship, well-timed jump, got the ball in her glove, but could not squeeze it, and it came out. So there are now runners at the corners. Garza is at third, and Clark's been repla replaced by a courtesy runner. Let me see if I can identify that runner. It is Savannah Searle. Searle as in Pearl. First pitch swinging and fouled out of play to Casey Perkins. So Katie is ranked number 20, and whoever draws the poison pill, hold on, here's the pitch. Swing and a foul tip by Perkins that trickles back behind home plate. So whoever ends up as the fourth seed out of District 26A could be Elkins, could be Ridgepoint. Well, that person is more than likely going to have to play against Katie in the first round of the playoffs. And now there is an equipment issue for the catcher, Braylon Daniels, and she needs to go over there and I'm not... I guess maybe they're just taking the belt out because it was bothering her or something. So she is up there in her Sansa belts. There's a high fly ball to left field. Ship comes in, now goes back, makes the catch, throws home. Throw is cut off, and the run scores. Lauren Garza comes home, and it's a sacrifice fly for Casey Perkins. That's the second out. Number four, Addie Flores. Now, Addie Flores. So you just don't want to play Katie in the first round if you can't avoid it, but that's going to happen to either Elkins or Rich Point. First pitch to Flores, first pitch swinging off the glove of Reagan Green. It was a fair ball. And going all the way to third on the play is Searle. Searle had stayed at first on the sacrifice fly play. So she moves into scoring position with two outs and three runs already in. I said Searle as in Pearl because it's Rachel spelled S-E-A-R-L and now Rachel Ramirez. Grounded out to second or first time. Swings late on the first delivery and fouls it off the fence on the right side. Here comes the next one. That's yeah, a ball outside, evidently. I guess the right word would be apparently. Here's the pitch, and it's a ground ball toward Uresti. She digs it out, throws to Green. They get the out, but not before Travis scores three runs on four hits. There were no errors, and there were two runners left on base. And we'll proceed to the fourth. Ridge Point's got to come back. They are down three to nothing on BikeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G. 
Can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X by gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Braylon Daniels leads off for Ridge Point in the top of the fourth. The Panthers trail three to nothing. Nobody was able to break the seal on the scoring until Travis scored three times on four hits in their half of the third. Daniels with a home run swing comes up empty. It is now one and one. Daniels hit a foul pop up in the second inning. Here's the 1-1, and she hit that high in the air. Calling for it is the left hand, left fielder, Addie Flores, the left-hander. The left fielder, Addie Flores, and she's got it. One away. Now Riley Ship comes up. She's a commit for Letourneau University in Longview. Calvin Lopez, a Kempner alum, is playing baseball at Letourneau. And the first pitch to Riley is high for a ball. Here's Kowaliski's 1-0 pitch. I said Kowaliski, it's Kowaluski, sorry. She joined us during a Travis baseball broadcast for an in-game interview. We always like those. 2-0 pitch is high, three and nothing. Ridge Point dugout is making a lot of noise now just to try and get their team going. And it's down and out, ball four. Riley Ship hustling on down to first base. Now Bailey Gray, who'd really like to help herself out. She's right now on the hook to be the losing pitcher. The sunlight is really getting bright for the infielders, especially on the right side because it's sinking low in the sky. And there's the first pitch swinging, but it's a grab of a line drive. Addie Flores in left field. Squeezed it, and now there are two away. That would have rolled for a long time if she had not grabbed it. And it's up to Blaine Simmons to try and keep this inning going for Ridge Point. She hit a foul pop up in the second. First pitch in there for a strike at the belt. If she can get on, then it'll be Callie Mays. Kowaluski, Roxanne brings it. And it is high for a ball, one and one. Addie Flores has made one easy play in this half inning and another very difficult one. High skied in the air to center field, Casey Perkins. She's got it. And Kowaluski works around the walk. And gives up nothing. We'll move to the bottom of the fourth.
Travis right now in control by a score of three to nothing. We'll be back on fightfortben.com. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Tonight's exclusive coverage of Fort Bend County softball, Travis versus Ridgepoint, is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. By First Tyrant Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires, great service at great prices, anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday. Visit firsttyrantauto.com. By Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South, just inside Sam Houston Number Tollway. Six, L. Smith. And you will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. L. Smith leads off for Travis. First pitch swinging, line drive to Reagan Green, who goes to her knees and gloves it. No need to step on the bag. One away after one pitch, now Jaden Cobrin, and she will be followed to the plate by one, Ariel Kowalewski. <laughs> Bailey Gray steps back to the back of the pitcher's circle. Now she's ready to bring the first pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Cobrin singled and scored. She singled to lead off that third inning for Travis, and they are up three to nothing. Swing and a miss at a pitch that would have been a ball up around her eyes, but you know, sometimes you see something you like and you gotta go for it. No guarantee that you'll always get it. Here's the 0-2, and Bailey Gray kind of lost her balance. And she was unable, okay. Lindsey Gage, head coach for Ridgepoint, is upset with the umpire for granting time. Cobran asked for time while Gray had started her motion. And she said you can't wait that late to grant her time because somebody could get hurt. All right, now we're ready for the 0-2 pitch. Called strike three. Two outs and the base is empty, and that, by the way, is the second strikeout for Gray. And what you want if you're Ridgepoint when you do Number face two, Ariel Kowalewski is for her to be up there with two outs and nobody on. Here's the first pitch. Upstairs for a ball. Kowalewski walked in the first but didn't get home. And she hit a triple to drive home Cobran with the first run. And now she sends one to the left field corner and it's Riley Ship with a nice running catch just inside the foul line. So a one, two, three inning for Bailey Gray. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning. No, the bottom of the fourth inning. Sorry about that. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Travis leads Ridgepoint by a score of three to nothing. Hey, Becky G, 
Can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds, faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and X5 gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Well, I said a couple of things that were wrong. Right before I went to commercial break, I said we were going to the bottom of the fourth. We're actually going to the top of the fifth. So Travis in the field, visiting team Bridgepoint, now hitting Callie Mays, leading off for the Panthers who trail three to nothing. And they're trying to get the win here and avoid the danger of being the fourth seed, if they happen to lose tonight and have to play Elkins again on Monday night, then the best they can be is the third seed going into the playoffs. Callie Mays took the first pitch for a ball. Second one, she swings as she's leaving the batter's box and fouls it on the left side. The wind continuing to blow here at Travis. Pretty strong out to left field but the pitchers have neutralized any power hitting from either team. The 1-1, one -one, Mays swings and slices it over the third base stands. Callie likes to go oppo, so you gotta be careful in the third base stands when she, as a left-handed hitter, kind of takes that step while swinging. Here's the pitch. Checks her swing, she went around, it's a called strike, it's not, she went around, it's a swinging strike three. She didn't think so. Fourth strikeout for Kowalewski, back to the top of the order, Jade Uresti. Uresti has walked and struck out, first pitch to her. Swinging, and a mighty swing it is, but fouled back into the sunlight. When I think of the Travis baseball field, I think it's one of the longest treks to the restroom from the, the field. But when you're at the softball field here, Travis, you're a lot closer. Here's the 0-1. Uresti lashes that one foul down the right side. Foul by three or four feet. She takes practice swings, and when the bat comes around, it really slaps her hard in the back, but doesn't seem to bother her. Open stance from the left-handed box. Looks at the 0-2 down and away. Uresti ready. Kowalewski rocks and brings it. Swing and a miss. Second strike out of the inning, fifth of the game. Malin Simmons has gotten on, well, no, I was about to say she had gotten on base every time. Actually, she put down a sacrifice bunt to advance Jade Uresti in the first inning. And then in her second plate appearance in the third inning, she singled. Kowalewski brings it. Fouled out of play back into our left. The sun is still out, but it's gone behind a big puffy cumulus cloud, so the entire field for at least a few moments is in shade. Here's the 0-1. Outside, 1-1 one one on Malin Simmons. Slightly close stance from the left-handed box. Ariel brings it. 
swing and a miss at the changeup, and it's one and two. Kowalewski throws the changeup seldom enough that it really throws people off. They're expecting something faster, and the difference in miles per hour is very significant. One, two pitches upstairs, and it's even two and two. Now the sun has moved out from behind the cloud. You got shadows all over the infield, but a lot of sunlight as well. 2-2, two, two, swung on and missed. Ariel Kowalewski strikes out the side. It's getting late for Rich Point. We'll move to the bottom of the fifth. They trail the Travis Tigers, three to nothing. Coming up for Travis, it's Lauren Garza, Matty Morris, and Kennedy Clark. We'll be back on VikeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. All right, Ridge Point and Travis fans, we have a lot for you coming up in the final week of the season. Actually, final week of the baseball Number season. Nine, this Lauren is Garza. the final week of the softball season. Tomorrow, a non-district game. Baseball, Ridge Point at Brazoswood. Batter up show at 1040 a.m., first pitch at 11. Lauren Garza leads off for the Travis softball team. Leading three to nothing over Rich Point. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Bailey Gray brings the first pitch. And it's in there for a strike. One week from today at 4 p.m. Early start on Friday. It's the baseball game between Rich Point and Travis, possibly to decide the District 26A championship. The second pitch from Bailey Gray to Lauren Garza was a ball. It's one and one. Bailey brings the next one upstairs, two and one, on Lauren Garza, who put down a sacrifice bunt in the first. In the third, she walked and came around to score. Gray Roxanne brings the next one. That is a line drive to left center, and it will roll to the fence. Garza goes for second. Is she going to keep going? No, she'll pull in there as... Ridge Point gets it back in. Lead off double for Lauren Garza, and they're already up three to nothing, and the Travis Tigers look like uh, they're, they're salivating to get some more runs. Number 13, Maddie Morris. Maddie Morris is ready for Din Din. She's got an appetite for more runs on the scoreboard, and here's the first pitch to her. And it's upstairs for a ball. Bridge point. There's a pitch by Bailey Gray and it goes wide of third, just foul. Foul by one foot. Ridge Point used to dominate District 26A when the UIL realigned and they brought in George Ranch. They lost a district game to George Ranch, but they also lost a couple to Travis. There's another foul ball on the ground just past Yannick's outstretched glove wide of third. But don't sleep on a quality team just because they lost three or four district games. 
Here's the one, two. Upstairs, two and two now on Matty Morris. So Travis has proven itself the superior team in District 26A. But the slate is wiped clean once you get into the playoffs. Line drive to Yannick. She catches it at third and looked at second, but it was too late to double up Lauren Garza. Nice play for the first out, so that runner still at second. Garza, now Kennedy Clark. Number 10, Kennedy Clark. Looks up at the barrel of the bat while she kind of twists it a little bit in her hands. Now stands in from the left-handed box. Looks at the first pitch, ball one. Clark is one for two with a third inning single. Here's the pitch. Over, but it's low, and it's two and nothing on Kennedy Clark. We've got that cloud covering up the sun again, so we're shady. Pop up into foul ground on the left side, Yannick tracking. She's got it, two away. So that runner in scoring position at second base is Lauren Garza and Casey Perkins comes up. She drove in a run with a sacrifice fly when she came up in the third. Gray brings her the first pitch high in the air toward left. Ship not having to back up, it won't carry and she catches it. So Ridgepoint gets out of it without any damage, but they've got two more innings in which to try and Knot this game up and take the lead. Three to nothing, Travis, as we continue on VipeFortBend.com. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, here we go with Ridgepoint in the top of the sixth. Grace Yannick leading off against Ariel Kowalewski. Grace has one for two with a double. First pitch was a ball. Second pitch also a ball. Two and nothing. Ridgepoint needs some base running traffic to get back to the top of the order before they're done in the seventh. Just missing the outside corner, Kowalewski with a long look in. Thought maybe that was a strike, but instead it is three and nothing on Yannick. Reagan Green and Braylon Daniels to follow her to the plate. Here's the pitch. Outside, it's a four pitch walk to Grace Yannick to lead off the fifth. Reagan Green, 0 for 1, hit a foul pop up, but also walked to lead off the second. Hey. 
Green swings at the first pitch and powers it to center field. And it is caught out there. How about that? Nice catch by Casey Perkins. The wind kind of knocked it down, I think. Yannick retreats to first, and there's one away. Now Braylon Daniels has hit the ball in the air twice. Right-handed hitter against Kowalewski, who's been rock solid. Here's the pitch. Change up outside, throw down to first. Yannick is back in. Daniels ready, here's the pitch. Swing and a foul tip into the mid of Kennedy Clark and it's one and one. Did somebody say Bad Bunny? Is that her nickname? No. Oh. Here's the one one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Daniels steps out. Needs to get ready for the one and two, which will come from a tough customer inside the pitcher's circle. Swing and a miss, it gets through the mid of Clark. She throws down to second to try and get an out. And out at first. Yannick moved on the pitch because it, it got through the catcher's mitt, but first base was occupied, so it's not one of those situations where Daniels could run down to first on a third strike that the catcher didn't handle. So two out on the strikeout. It's the uh, seventh of the game for Kowalewski and her first pitch to Riley Ship is ball one. Here's the pitch. Ship swings and misses, it's one and one. Now if if Kowalewski can retire ship, that means she'd face the seven, eight, nine hitters for Ridgepoint in the top of the seventh. Ridgepoint would have to get somebody on to get to the top of the order in your resty Malin Simmons and company. Pitch is a ball, two and one on Riley Ship, who has struck out and walked. Here's the pitch. And she fouls it out of play on the left side. The lights are on here at Travis. Temperature is down to 79 degrees, but still very comfortable. Roger Smith along with the silent partner, producer Les Clary and the mothership, Vibe World Headquarters. We're in the top of the sixth. Ridge Point trailing three to nothing. Here's Kowalewski's pitch. That is hit foul in the air. A lot of spin on that one, and the wind blows it hard onto the football practice field. A lot of encouragement coming from the Ridge Point side. They so badly just want to get on the board and start to come back in this game. And another foul out of play. Riley Ship is battling. Battle might be a good middle name for her. Riley Battleship. Here's another 2-2, and it's a slow roller towards shortstop. Scooped by Garza, throws it across, and it's wild. And a run comes home, and we've got an injury as Ship went down as she crossed first base. Now she's kind of up on her knees, and Coach Nate Peroni is checking on her. She's just checking her, uh, shaking her head a little bit. The helmet is off. A run has come home as Grace Yannick crossed the plate it's now three to one. And Ship is on base, and the question now is will she stay out there? And she's walking around. I think she's gonna stay in. All right. She's going back to first base. She's a ball player. You're not getting her out of this game. No way. All right, so it's a an infield single for Riley Ship, and it drives home a run, and it's three to one Ridge Point. 
Grace Yannick came home. So what we have here is a 3-1 game, and what we know is that with Ship getting on there, then at the very least, Jade Uresti is going to come up in the top of the seventh. Now it's Bailey Gray. Pitch bounces in, and it's ball one. Gray is one for two with a single, and she hit the ball hard to left field. When she came up in the fourth, she could very easily be two for two. Strike on the outside corner. It's one and one. Here's the pitch. Strike on the outside corner. It is one and two on Gray. She's got to go into protect mode. Outfield shallow for her. Kowalewski looks in at the catcher, Clark, brings it. And that's a line drive toward right center field. It is down for a hit. Ship is going to second. She's coming to third, and they hold her at third base. It's a double for Gray. Ridge Point rallying. And now Blaine Simmons with one of the bigger at-bats of her senior year. And it looks like we are going to have a pinch hitter. It's Nohea Anderson. The sophomore comes up and she will bat for Blaine Simmons and we have a courtesy runner, Hannah Purvis, comes to second base to run for Gray. All right, tough situation for Nohea Anderson. It's been kind of a forgettable year for her, but she could really wash a lot of those memories away right here with a big hit. First pitch, strike on the outside corner. She looks at Coach Gage. Right-handed hitting, Nohea Anderson in a pinch hitting roll. Here it comes, and it's off the end of the bat. It's a roller to first. Rachel Ramirez makes the play herself. So Ridge Point gets some traffic going, and they get a run. And when they come to bat in the top of the seventh, it's going to be Callie Mays, then the top of the order after that. But Travis would like to have bigger than a three-run lead when they bat in the bottom of the sixth, and we'll come back with that on VikeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavano with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Sorry, didn't mean to leave you there for a minute. All right, so Travis is ready to add some insurance runs, and we want to let you know that you can always save money on your car and home insurance if you go to the Needville Insurance Agency. You don't even have to leave your house. You can reach them online, needvilleinsurance.com, or call 979-793-7411. First pitch swinging and a foul ball into the Ridge Point dugout. In and out of Grace, I'm sorry, uh, in and out of the glove of Reagan Green. She almost made a catch exactly like the one that was made by Maddie Morris for Travis. She caught one that was destined for the dugout on the third base side. By the way, it's Addie Flores batting. I think I neglected uh, to mention that. Check swing, she could not help but go around, and it's 0-2. Addie Flores has walked and singled. And made some nice catches out in left field. Here's the pitch. Bounces in, and wow, that almost took out our microphone. 
Everything's okay. It almost took out a camera as well. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if that uh, frightened you, which it very well could have. All right, so one and two on Flores. Here's the pitch. Little chopper foul on the third base side. Yannick pouncing on it like a cat. And in this cat fight, you know, it is Tigers and Panthers. Travis leads it 3-1, to one, bottom of the sixth. Travis is going to win the District 26A championship no matter what, but they want to go through the schedule 13-1. and one. However, there is a swinging strikeout by Addy Flores, one away in the bottom of the sixth. And now Rachel Crazy Train Ramirez stands in. She wears glasses under the batting helmet. Swing and a miss on the first pitch from Bailey Gray. I think about major leaguers who have worn glasses in the batter's box, and there have been quite a few. One of them, I remember Daryl Porter, was a catcher for the Kansas City Royals. Next pitch. Downstairs for a ball, one and one. Also... The Cincinnati Reds, when they won the World Series in 1990, had a young third baseman named Chris Sabo, and he wore the safety goggle glasses. Here's the 1-1. Downstairs for ball two. Rachel Ramirez has grounded out twice. L. Smith to follow her to the plate. Here's the 2-1. Upstairs, and it's three and one. Bailey Gray does not, I repeat, not want to walk the seventh place hitter. But that's what the Tiger girls want, as you can hear them chanting. Here comes a 3 1. Fly ball going to go out of play on the right side. Looks like it's shaping up to be an absolutely gorgeous evening. Gray ready. And the pitch is outside for a ball. One out walk for Rachel Ramirez. L. Smith comes up. Number six, L. Smith. The long blonde ponytail flapping in the breeze. And our field is completely covered in shade now. Twilight falling on 11111 Harlem Road. First pitch swinging and missed. L. Smith down nothing and one. She hit a line drive to the first base player, Reagan Green, her last time up. The 0 1 pitch upstairs. Sure, it'd be nice for Ridge Points, from Ridge Points perspective, to have a nice hard double play ball. Swing and a foul tip that bounces off the backstop. You heard that. We bring you the most colorful audio in sports web radio. We even had some colorful language during the baseball game between Clements and Elkins last week. Here's the one, two. Off the end of the bat, again foul to the backstop. And L. Smith hanging in there like a rusty fish hook. Bailey Gray in there for the duration in the pitcher circle for Ridge Point and ditto Ariel Kowalewski for Travis. Here's the one two. Upstairs, two and two. Making a lot of noise in that Travis dugout. It's one of the things I love about baseball and softball. Here's the 2-2. Outside corner, oh, it just missed. It's three and two. You know, when you're in Little League, they kind of control what you say in the dugout, but once you get in high school, you can kind of say what you want. And the kids are smart enough to know how far to go with it. 
Called strike three, down goes L. Smith. Painting the outside black is Bailey Gray. Now Jaden Coburn will come up with two outs. Number one, Jaden Coburn. Right-handed hitter facing Gray. Here's the pitch. Fouls it right back, and it would have hit me right in the face if not for chain-link fencing. I heard that. Nothing and one the count on Cobran, who is one for two with a third-inning single. Let off the three-run inning for Travis. She swings and misses at the second pitch, and she's down 0-2. Ridge Point trailing three to one. Gray brings the 0-2. Line foul down the right side, slicing over near the bullpen on the first base side, the visitor's bullpen. Coach Katie Kilgore is moving over from the third base box saying something to her, her players, and I think it's just kind of fun conversation rather than the serious variety. Chopper to first, Reagan Green backhands it, runs to the bag, and Travis is done in the bottom of the sixth. But they lead three to one, and here we go. Last chance for the Ridgepoint Panthers. It'll be Callie Mays, Jade Uresti, and Malin Simmons do. We'll continue on VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 630.22. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x by gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Back again at Travis with it. Lady Tigers are trying to wrap up a win that would bring them to 13 and one in District 26A softball. They've wrapped up first place in the district. So Ridge Point is just trying to get a better playoff seating, but if they can't come back in this one, that'll hurt a little bit. Now it's Callie Mays with two strikeouts on the night. Little mound meeting, I guess I could say a pitcher circle meeting for Travis. And Ariel Kowalewski is ready to try and finish this thing off. Bringing it to the left-hander, Callie Mays. Pitch on the way. Outside for a ball. By the way, I've made an executive decision about what games we're covering over the next eight days. Next pitch by Kowalewski, swung on, and Mays fouls it to the backstop, and it's one and one. All right, so tomorrow, 10.40 a.m., a non-district game, batter-up show comes your way from Brazoswood. Ridge Point at the Brazoswood Buccaneers. Then on Tuesday night, it is Elkins against Travis. Travis fans, join us for that one at 6.40. Mays takes a pitch upstairs. So that tells you what we have on Tuesday. Oh, I forgot, uh, Monday... Ridge Point's going to be involved in a seeding playoff game against either Elkins or George Ranch. Mays fouls it out of play to the left. So Ridge Point softball on Monday night against Elkins or George Ranch. Travis Elkins baseball on Tuesday night. And then on Friday at 4 p.m., Travis Ridge Point baseball. Mays sends one to left field, twisting, and it gets out of the glove of Addie Flores and drops down. Callie Mays motors into second, and that's got to be an E7. So Callie Mays might be the one to put the spark to the flame here. 
So it, it was one of those hits that had Addie Flores moving to her left, but the ball was slicing to her right, and she didn't realize the degree to which it was slicing. And now Jade Uresti, first pitch in there for a strike. Rich Point might be in that mode where you're taking until you see a strike. Well, now Jade Uresti has seen one. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. That was a big rip. She almost came out of her shoes. She steps out and thinks about what to do on the 0-2. That pitch just misses the outside corner in a nice, nice location by Kowalewski just trying to get a chase. Now it's one and two. Here's the pitch. Way upstairs, two and two. Kowalewski, uh, Kowalewski moves to the back of the circle. Now steps up. Uresti. Open stance. Left-handed box. Here comes the 2-2. Upstairs, and it's 3-2. Kowalewski again to the back of the circle, and now she steps up. The payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. One away. Now Belin Simmons, sacrifice bunt in the first, a single in the third, and struck out in the fifth. Eight strikeouts for Kowalewski, first pitch swinging by Simmons, and it's down the left field line out of play as Flores gives it a look. Home plate umpire takes a moment to brush off the plate. By the way, we'll have softball playoffs next week, but we got to figure out when and where because those things are yet to be determined. We'll have softball and baseball as much as we can bring you. Simmons swings at the second pitch and slices it foul. Further out of play this time. She's down 0-2. Grace Yannick waits to bat next. Ridgepoint trailing 3-1. Simmons is the tying run in the batter's box. Here's the pitch. And she lines it into center for a base hit. And they're going to hold Callie Mays at third base. There are runners at the corners with only one out. And now it is Grace Yonick's turn. Solid sounding hit for Malin Simmons. And now Ridgepoint gets the go-ahead run to the plate. Grace Yannick has home run power. Now there's a pitcher's circle meeting. Players only. Home plate umpire going out there to say, that'll be enough of that. He's not there yet. Now they break it up before he gets there. It's kind of like, Dad's coming upstairs. Shh. Okay. All right, Grace Yannick hit into a double play, doubled and walked. Scored a run, the only run so far for Ridgepoint. First pitch to her, she swings and slices it. Foul out of play on the right. Kolowski still has the velo. Righty on righty. Here comes the 0-1. And that is lined toward the right center field gap and it gets down, it's in the gap. Callie May scores, it is three to two. Here comes Malin Simmons around third. She's gonna score. It is tied at three. Yannick gets in the third. The throw gets away. Here she comes. She's safe. Rich Point leads four to three. Rich Point leads four to three. Grace Yannick, a triple to the right center field gap and an error that gets her home. Lightning strikes with three runs for the Panthers. Still only one out. And with the bases clean, Reagan Green comes up. Wow, how about that? Look at all those smiling faces in the first base stands. They looked so apprehensive before, and now we have yet another pitcher circle meeting, and this time it is Katie Kilgore out there to talk to her team. And I just heard somebody say it's not over, and indeed it is not. A lot of softball to be played, but Ridgepoint would love to 
add another run or two. I, I honestly don't know who should get the error that got Yannick from third to home. Doesn't matter though. It is an error and now Reagan Green with one out and the base is empty. Kowalewski rocks and brings it. Hard ground ball to shortstop. Lauren Garza up with it and throws out Green. The throw a little bit high, but Rachel Ramirez makes the catch and comes back to earth with her foot on the bag. That's the second out. Now Braylon Daniels, 0-4-3 tonight. Steps in and Kowalewski ready to bring the first pitch to her. Here it comes. Change up, swung on and missed before the ball even got to the front of the plate. Daniels had finished her swing. By the way, it'll be the top of the order. Ariel Kowalewski leading off for Travis when they bat in the bottom of the seventh. It is fisted foul on the right side. Daniels is down 0-2. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Daniels ready for another 0-2 pitch. Kowalewski brings it. Outside corner just missed and that's an accurate call I believe but Kennedy Clark doing what a good catcher does. She moves all the way over, putting her weight on her right knee where the umpire can see the outside edge. One, two pitch, short right field, up in the air, it's the second baseman, L. Smith going back to get it. But Ridge Point strikes for three runs on two hits, there were two errors, and nobody left on base. So we'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Ridge Point was trying to rescue victory from the jaws of defeat, now they're protecting the lead. Four to three. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Oh, we got a ball game now. 4-3, to three, Ridge Point trying to protect the lead in the bottom of the seventh, and the first pitch to Ariel Kowalewski is in the air for a strike. Nothing in one as Bailey Gray, the starter for the Panthers, continues to work. All of a sudden, she has a one-run lead to protect. The 0-1 pitch is upstairs to Kowalewski. After Kowalewski, Lauren Garza and Maddie Morris. Oh, that was a strike. Okay, it's nothing in two. The pitch from Gray. Hard hit ball. Reagan Green backhands it on her knees, throws over to first. Not in time. Kowalewski is safe. Uresti was covering, and that was going to be a tie goes to the runner situation. But because Uresti had just kind of an awkward angle to turn around and look for the throw, it went out of her glove. But that's an infield hit. 
So now the tying run is at first base. That's Kowalewski and Lauren Garza. She is the potential winning run for Travis. First pitch to her, and it's a bunt, and it bounces off her bat to the ground and then back up to the bat. So foul ball, strike one. Ridge point, trying to protect that lead. Now a bunt back to the mound, grabbed by Gray, thrown to first, Uresti covering, the sacrifice works, and the tying run gets to second with one away. The teams, both of them, have done great with their sacrifice bunts. Just perfect execution, and defensively, the opposition has handled it. So that is one out. 13, Maddie Morris. Maddie Morris, 0 for 3 tonight, but she did hit the ball hard in the fifth when she lined out to Yannick at third base in the first pitch. Swung on and missed, it's nothing in one. Righty versus righty, Morris digs in, takes a pitch high for a ball, it's one and one. Kowalewski with great speed at second. Bay reaches, uh, Gray reaches down and adjust the bottom of the pants just making sure the knees are covered here comes the one one check swing strike she did go around and it's one and two on morris this would be a sweet win for ridge point that's really struggled to win games in the second half of district play there's a chopper foul on the ground on the left So if Ridge Point can hang on and win this one, it means that each team won on the other team's home field, although Travis run ruled the Panthers in their first district meeting. All right, ready for a one, two, here it comes. Change up, call, strike three. Down goes Morris, and there are two away. Now it's down to Kennedy Clark, left-handed hitter. Ariel Kowalewski led off this inning with an infield hit. She got to second on a sacrifice bunt, but she's still there. She represents the tying run. First pitch to Clark, upstairs for ball one. She's one for three with a third inning single. Gray brings it. That is hit hard into right center field. Here comes Kowalewski around third. We are tied. RBI single for Clark. And they go nuts on the Travis side. And now Ridge Point goes from the elation of being up four to three to now just hoping that they can get to extra innings as Travis has tied the game up. And we're going to have a pinch runner, a courtesy runner. It is Searles coming on to run for Clark. And when Kennedy gets back to the dugout, what a reception she's going to get. You know, the great Winston Churchill once said, there is nothing on this earth. There is nothing on this earth so exhilarating as to be shot at and missed. First pitch swinging, foul ground on the right. Reagan Green by the dugout. She overran it. And it drops. Oh, she had a chance to catch that one. Nothing and one the count on Perkins. So the, the metaphor of being shot at and missed is Travis was, they were an out away from defeat and now they have tied the game. There's a strike right down the middle and it's nothing and two on Perkins. Bailey Gray just trying to get through the seventh. Here's the pitch. Change up, slowly hit toward Yannick at third, throws across in time, and we are going to the eighth inning. So the Travis Tigers come up with a one run on two hits, no errors, and one runner left on base. And we shall continue to the eighth inning, four to four on VipeFortMen.com. Hey, Becky G. 
can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Well, we went into this softball game thinking it wasn't quite the high stakes we gain, uh, high stakes type of game we thought it could be. But it sure is fun now that we are at four to four and going to the eighth inning. Riley Ship leads off for Rich Point against Kowalewski in the first pitch, misses the outside corner, one and nothing on Riley. She's one for two plus a walk. Here's the 1-0 inside. She backs away from it, and it's a ball. And again, you have Clark, the catcher for Travis, trying to frame it. That's what you do when you're a catcher. Here's the 2-0. Ship checks her swing, and it's downstairs, 3-0. Here's the next one. Ball four to Riley Ship. She's been making things happen because when she came up in the sixth when Ridgepoint was desperate to get the game at least tied, she had an RBI single, and now she has let off the eighth with a walk, and that brings up Bailey Gray. The last time she was due, sorry about that, she got a hit when she came up before and uh, was replaced by Hannah Purvis. Down the right field line, it bounces in front of the right fielder, Maria Reese. Riley Ship is gonna get to third and Gray coasts into second with a double. Ridge Point has things going here. They scored three in the top of the seventh just to save this game from being there their fourth district loss of the year. Now Hannah Purvis comes on to run for Bailey Gray. Ship is at third. Purvis running at second. Blaine Simmons is the hitter due. But it is a pinch hitter for the Ridgepoint Panthers. Correction, it is Blaine Simmons, my bad, sorry. Here's the 1-0. Outside corner strike, one and one. She bends down and gets a handful of dirt. Here's the 1-1. That's a ground ball into center field for a base hit and Ridge Point leads by one. Riley Ship comes home from third. Hannah Purvis stops at third. And the Ridge Point Panthers have their second lead of the game. Now they're up five to four and they're still in business as Simmons is at first with her base hit. A walk, a double and a single and now Callie Mays stands in. First pitch to her, missed and a stolen base by Blaine Simmons. They did not throw down but now there are two runners in scoring position. Rich Point already leading five to four here in the top of the eighth. And a great opportunity for Mays. Nothing and one the count. That pitch was a strike. If I neglected to say so, she fouls one out of play to our left. Nobody out. 
A lot of ways to get a run home here. The infield is drawn in very close. Except for second baseman L. Smith. Pitch is wide. Kennedy Clark backhands it. Nice job there to make sure that Hannah Purvis stays at third. Blaine Simmons is at second. She singled to drive home the go-ahead run, and she stole second without a throw. Here's the one-two. Little tapper foul over on the right side over by the on-deck area. By the way, Kennedy Clark is a left-handed throwing catcher. You won't often see a left-handed throwing catcher in softball and pretty much never in baseball. Swing and Mays fouls one into the darkness on the left side. I guess I should say the gathering darkness. Mays open stance. Kowalewski steps back up there and brings it. And that is a ground ball, base hit into right center field. Here comes Purvis, and here comes Blaine Simmons. Two runs come in on a single by Callie Mays. And it's seven to four, Rich Point on top. They have come back from what appeared to be the dead. And look at them now. Now this game means that uh, if they do hang on and win, they're going to play George Ranch on Monday night. Now to the top of the order, Jade Uresti. She looks at the first pitch. It's a ball outside. Here's the 1-0. Outside for a ball, 2 and nothing. Still nobody out in this inning. If Ridge Point goes on to win, that means Elkins is then the fourth seed. And the only thing to be determined would be George Ranch and Ridge Point. Who is the second seed? Who's the third seed? There's a bunt put down and the play made. Kowalewski throws to first to retire Uresti. Uresti making an amazing play where she only had one hand off, uh, only one hand on the bat. And it kind of moved up toward the, the barrel and she just kind of sticks the ball up there with her left hand as she takes a quick step or two to first. So that's a sacrifice bunt for the first out in the first pitch swinging by Malin Simmons down the left field line, caught, out made, tagging and going to third, safe is Callie Mays. So that moves Callie Mays over to third base on the fly ball to left field, two away. And now it's Grace Yannick who came through with a triple that drove home a pair of runs and she herself came home. First pitch to her, change up, just missed the outside corner. Yannick adjusts the face mask on the batting helmet. Ready for the 1-0, here it comes. Fly ball right field, it's not gonna carry. Maria Reese closing in, she dives and it drops in. It didn't get in her glove. Another run comes in. Ridge Point is up eight to four as Callie May scores from third. The wind kinda knocked it down. It was sinking in front of her and Maria Reese could not hold on. But we're gonna have to give Grace a single for that. It was a tough play to make. So in my book, I'm gonna give her a single, but that means one, two, three, four hits in the inning. And now Reagan Green with Yannick at second. Pitch outside, ball one on Green. Walked, popped up, flied to center, grounded out to short. Kowalewski brings the 1-0, swing and a miss. Yannick took a pretty big lead off the bag after the ball had crossed the front part of the plate. And Kennedy Clark came up ready to throw. Here's the pitch, 
Fly ball to left. It is deep. It's got a chance. It is gone. Reagan Green has gone yard. And they're coming out of the Ridgepoint dugout. A two run shot for Reagan Green ups the ante. It goes from eight to four to 10 to four. They're mobbing her at home plate. What an explosion for Ridgepoint. Three runs to save the game in the seventh. And in the eighth, they score six times. Reagan Green with a bomb. Oh my goodness, how things have turned around. And there's still, well, I, I was about to say there's still one out, but that would be wrong. There are two outs. Now Braylon Daniels, the ninth Panther to bat in this inning. Comes up with the bases empty. Kowalewski brings it. Change up in there for a strike. Daniels is 0 for 4. But not worried about that. That is a line drive to center, but the catch made. Casey Perkins as she goes to her knees. And that'll do it. And Travis has a six-run deficit staring at them. And they'll be up. In the bottom of the eighth, it'll be Flores, Ramirez, and L. Smith who are due. We shall return on VipeFortBend.com. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi enabled safe spaces to study. So more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at comcast.com slash education. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, Travis will try to save the day, but it's going to take a lot of offense. In this bottom of the eighth inning, they trail 10 to 4 to the Ridgepoint Panthers. Travis led 3 to 1 before Ridgepoint came to bat in the top of the sixth. They got one then, scored three in the seventh to take the lead. Then Travis forced extra innings by scoring a run in the bottom of the seventh, but then Rich Point put six on the board in the top of the eighth. And here we are, Addie Flores took the first pitch for a ball, the second one on the way, fly ball to short right center field, it's Uresti, the second base player, she's got it with two feet on the outfield grass, one away. So, if Travis goes on to lose this game, it's really not of any consequence to them because they were already the first seed in the district. Number seven, Rachel Rich Point Ramirez. really needed the game, I think, because they didn't want to risk the possibility of playing Katie in round one. Now the first pitch to Rachel Ramirez with one away, and it is down for a ball. Rachel is 0 for 2 with two ground outs to second, but she did walk in the sixth. Here's the pitch. And that is over but low. L. Smith waiting to bat next. Right-handed hitting, Rachel Ramirez. Here's the pitch. 
And that is just upstairs for a ball, 3-0. and oh. If you're Bailey Gray, of course you want to make quick work of this inning, but it is nice to have a six-run cushion. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. They gave Rachel Ramirez the green light on 3-0, and oh, but she came up empty. Gray grinding the ball into her hip, now gets the grip. Roxon brings it. Strike on the outside corner and the count goes full. The payoff pitch to Rachel Ramirez. Ground ball toward the right side. Uresti gobbles it up, throws to Green. Two outs. So if the Panthers are to get their groove back, this is the kind of comeback win that just might do it for them. And then we'll see them on Monday night in a, a seeding game against George Ranch, and I sure hope it's on the hard scrabble streets of Siena. But I will ask Coach Gage. Here's the first pitch to L. Smith, and it is down low for a ball. The Travis Tigers are down to an out, trailing 10-4. Bailey Gray, Roxon brings the 1-0. Swung on and missed, the count even one and one. Bill Smith hopping up and down, thinking, you know, that was a pitch I could have done something with. But that's why they give you three. Here's the 1-1. Little ground ball, and Gray picks it up. She's gonna run to the bag herself, and that will do it. Rich Point with a comeback win over the Travis Tigers, and Travis, is the district 26A champion, however, with a record of 12 and two instead of 13 and one. We'll be back to wrap this one up. It was exciting. This is VibeFortBend.com. Be right back. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Hey, Becky G, can you play your next hit? <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as it's released. But I've got another big hit for you. Did you know that with Xfinity Internet, you get fast, reliable speeds to fit your needs and budget? Oh, that's nice. Even Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig to power all your devices. Best of all, you could save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill when you add Xfinity Mobile. It's official. That's a hit. Hey, we're on the radio. Now everyone can get the best value with Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Get gig speed internet now for just $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract when you also get Xfinity Mobile. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 63022. Restrictions apply. New gigabit internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Compares pricing of top carriers. Xfinity internet required. Become a Vibe Insider today. Access breaking news in high school sports. Enjoy premium articles and exclusive coverage written by expert analysts and watch exclusive videos, documentaries on programs in your area. It's only $2.99 a month if you subscribe for the monthly plan. If you go for the yearly plan, it rounds out to just $1.99 a month. It costs you only $24 a year to get all of your Vibe 
news throughout the entire year. Subscribe today. What are you waiting for? It's less than a cup of coffee a month. Become a Vibe Insider. $2.99 a month, $23.99 for the whole year. Hey, it's Vibe. We will see you at the games. Hey, batter, 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 swing. Oops, should have said driver. We love baseball season at First Tire and Automotive and want to see you swing by for great deals. $50 off brake pad replacement, buy one, get one free windshield wiper blades, $100 off four tires or $50 off two tires, and save up to $100 on Michelin, Continental, Goodyear, and Hercules tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Wow, what a game. Ridge Point comes back to win. Here are your totals. Ridge Point. Ten runs on 12 hits. They made no errors and left seven runners on base. And the Travis Tigers, four runs on seven hits. They made two errors and also left seven runners on base. So after three innings, it was three to nothing Travis. And when we went to the top of the sixth, it was still three to nothing Travis. Ridge Point got a run then. And then after six, it was three to one. Ridge Point with its... Last Hope came up with three to take the lead, four to three. And then when we went to the bottom of the seventh, Travis got a run to make it four to four. And then when Ridge Point came up in the top of the eighth inning, they just exploded for six runs. Grace Yannick had a triple that drove home two runs. And then Reagan Green added some insurance with a two run homer. And 10 to four is your final score. The winning pitcher is Bailey Gray. The losing pitcher is Ariel Kowalewski. This was exciting and what it means is that Ridge Point will play George Ranch and not Elkins on Monday. We don't know where that game will be, probably a neutral site. We just know it's gonna be on Monday night. So for my good friend Les Clary inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters, this is Roger Smith saying thank you for being with us, and if you stuck around till the late innings, you were rewarded because it was most exciting. Travis Faithful, not to worry. Your team is the champion of the district. They'll go into the playoffs as the number one seed out of 26A, and we shall see what happens. They made it to the third round last year, and we'll see what they can do this time around. Roger Smith from 11111 Harlem Road in Richmond. Our final score, Ridge Point 10 and Travis 4. The two teams split their season series. And we will talk to you tomorrow morning at 1040 a.m. when we bring you the Batter Up show prior to the baseball game between Ridge Point and Brazoswood. Good night, everybody, from Travis. God bless, and thanks for listening.